Welcome back, MTG Joe here on, I think it's day 15 of self-quarantine isolation. Uh, I was able to leave the house today after my travels, so I went grocery shopping, which is a barren wasteland. Um, but now we're here, and uh, we're going to be playing, I don't know if it's possible, but we're trying to play Control Without Blue. Uh, this is a Boros red-white control list. Uh, red-white walkers, uh, red-white... Screw to fairy, we're going to burn the world together. Um, so it's a different take on control. We're going to test it out, see how it goes. Um, the goal of the deck is to run your opponent out of resources uh, through a variety of planeswalkers and utility, and then win the game either with uh, Chandra uptick emblems, Sarkin make your team a, a, an army, uh, or Outlaws Merriment, uh, a seldom played card in the format. It's so a four mana enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep, you randomly get a token, uh, either a 3-1 with Trample Haste, 2-1 with Lifelink Haste, or 1-2 that pings something. Um, so the deck itself, kind of walking you through, we kind of break it into card advantage in the form of Birth of Milites, getting us a land and playing through the Saga, Golden Egg drawing us cards and we can pay mana to gain some life. Um, and then you have removal in the form of Scorching Dragon Fire, Planeswalkers, and Creatures. Bone Crusher Giant, uh, Planeswalkers, Creatures, and gives you a creature on the back end that can block. Uh, we have Clarions and Shatters, three and three. Uh, and then you have Conquer's Death, which removes taxes and reanimates. Uh, and then we got the Planeswalkers. So we got a couple Gideons. Uh, seems a little odd in a control list, at least in the main board. But Gideon is a four power creature that's indestructible that if you cast with Shatter on your turn, it doesn't die, you draw a card, it wipes your opponent's board, attack in. So that's something I wanna see if we can get off. A couple Chandras uh, in the control matchups, good because it could put pressure. It could also up the loyalty on either of our walkers here, um, but it could also flash back sorceries or instants so we can get back Scorching Dragon Fires or Clarions when we need them. Uh, some Shatters, a Lost Merriman like I mentioned, I'll get to Karn in a sec because there's a wish board. Um, I got Sarkins, uh, create a dragon, dragon your team up. Chandra's removal, uh, ping damage, and exile. And then a Nugan, general removal, as well as card advantage. Sar uh, Karn turns off Oven, uh, which is kind of cool in the main board, but it can also fetch a couple cards in the sideboard. Um, so we have a Graft Digger's Cage, turns off anything from coming from the graveyard. Croxa, Uro, Cat. Um, we have Glass Casket as just a uh, cheap removal we can fetch, some Spy Glasses, a Stone Coil Serpent which can stop most of the Bant mid ramp. It's also got Reach so it can stop um, the Dream Trawlers and they can't be Elspeth Conquer's Death or Teferi Bounced. And then if we have enough mana we can get Parhelion and then uh, we, can we could animate it with Karn. Uh, so it would be an 8 mana and then it attacks and it gets you Angels as well. Sideboard wise, otherwise, Disenchants, some Lava Coils, Robber versus the Slower matchups, and that's pretty much it. So let's fire it off, see how it goes. We're at Mythic 93, haven't been playing too much since we hit Mythic. Um, so let's try it out and see how it goes. Hey Max, doing well, how about yourself? Thanks for stopping by. Sorry, I was just getting through the deck tech, wanted to finish through all that. So we're playing 1620 today, see how it goes. Uh, this hand's fine. Hopefully it's a creature deck. We have a lot of removal. It's a creature deck. This is most likely Jun Sacrifice, or, um, Rakto Sacrifice. Just gonna cycle the egg here. Birth's actually not bad. Uh, I can turn on the light. Um, I think we just take a hit here and then we can clarion on next turn. Or I can just force them on their turn. Yeah, let's just do that. Drawn quite a few lands anyway, so I want to filter out the deck. Sarkin's a nice follow up. Let's 
So a little bit punished. They will get to draw some cards. I could dragon fire the Midnight Reaper this turn. That allows me to block and then I can, yeah, I think we do that. I don't want to give him the card draw. And then that gets them to tap the oven on their turn. Oh, it's downpouring here. So I'm going to do this now. And I'm going to do it on the Mayhem Devil. Or sorry, on the Midnight Reaper, just so they don't draw cards. And then I'm going to sack this to gain 3 life. Before it comes into play. Why didn't it still give me priority? It's fine, they'll just sack it there. We will take three points. I want to sack this before. You know, it stills net two life. It's just mana efficient to do this now. So we'll clarry on this turn. They can sack. So they have a little bit of ping damage here. I do gain two life from this. Oh wow, it is just absolutely downpouring outside. So we'll take some damage, that's fine, but I can go Clarion here and then untap. I can kill whatever they have this turn with the dragon fire, and then I can get Sarkin going. Okay, they keep it on top. They do have the fetch though, so they have to decide now if they want to fetch. And they sequenced that wrong. They should have um, sacked the Midnight Reaper first. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They get the same amount of damage. Thanks, Max. It varies the time of day. Um, sometimes I'll peak like close to 100. Other times it's just a couple people over. Um, I tend to just stream anyways uh, just to get the YouTube content up. It's ways that I can interact with people depending on what part of the world they're in. Okay, so they escape there. So before the, the trigger goes on so that they don't get to sack the thing. Oh wait, that's four power. Oh, I'm an idiot. I forgot on the escape. I messed up there. Now they got Cat Oven going. We do have Conqueror's Death. So that's actually a decent follow-up play. It's a bit weaker. So I can Clary on here. It doesn't do anything. the sack so if they have a uh, claim of the firstborn it's pretty bad to crap out so they didn't read what Sarkin does So that gets to die there. So it's actually pretty good because they lose their trigger now. So I'm going to plus here. I think we just attack with the one. And then I'm going to conquer's death here. 
The nice thing too is this exile so they can't escape it back. So opponent played a Dreadhorde Butcher that turn and with Cat both attacked in. So this is nice too because I have the Bone Crusher. Okay, so they don't bring it back, which is smart. I had Bone Crusher out. Um, cards in Graveyard 3. You know what? I'm going to let this resolve. Because I'm planning on deafening Clarion to gain some life back this turn. Do I have anything in the graveyard? Oh, shit. Didn't want that. Um... So we'll plus here. I summon you. So here I get to clear out their board, gain eight life. I meant to bin this at the bottom. Interface is uh, getting me today. So they can sack the cat to scry again. And then we'll see. Hey Quantum, how's it going? So I'm going to kill Familiar here because then it takes them off having something to sack each turn. So now they need a creature to come back in order to do that. They can't just keep looping Oven. Okay, so here if they kill Sarkin, I just get it back. Okay, they smartly don't. This does give them two food tokens though, so that's a great draw on their part. That was like the best draw they could have got probably. Because it takes us off the dragon. Next turn I could pop it, just make a dragon. Actually I can attack for lethal next turn. A little annoying we didn't draw into like either Blast Zone or Castle Ardenvale. Four cards, this takes four to exile, so second oven. Outlaw's Merriment, sweet. So the thing is, because they could just block Bone Crusher with the cat, I'm not going to uh, to do it. So as long as we can dodge something like uh, Mayhem Devil, we should be okay. Why is untapped not working? Should be able to see my deck list. Okay, so second cat's fine. Merriment can just start put pressuring the opponent. So it deals one damage to any target. Let's just go face here. Uh, 
That doesn't really do much right now. You have haste. Um, like they just block, block, sack, sack, and then it leaves me exposed. I just don't want to die to something with haste. Maybe I should have taken a turn for Sarkin to minus. I really just want the one with Trample. If we could get the one with Trample. Because they can gain quite a bit of life here. Third oven is annoying. So they get rid of a cat. I do have a target for Conker's death. That one's good too. Uh, it's iffy because they could gain some life here because they also have these food tokens. Because that gains him a life there. That'll gain him another life. This one's a close one. Had we just drawn Karn this game, then it's pretty much lethal. So they get a cat back, they block the giant, that drains us for one. They sack it, bring it back, that drains for one, so they're at nine. We hit them for th three, seven, so we're one short. Just short on this one. Because now they just untap, tap, and they do their stuff. Yeah, cat comes back and then they have three sacks on it. So let's see if they see it. I'm going to let them play it out. Oh, Dreadherd Butcher just gets us. They sack that, get back cat. So I'm letting them run out a bit of clock. The opponents played very slow this game. We are kind of forced into that attack anyways. We have to get them as low as possible, but they had lethal on board. Um, so in this matchup, I think I still want to keep so Ugin's not that good. We want to lower the curve probably. Merriment was fine. I'm going to bring in the Disenchants. Uh, Karn can shut off this other stuff, so we're fine. Dragonfire's fine. Gideon's bad in this matchup. I think we just run it otherwise the same. Actually, Chandra's pretty bad here. 
So Chandra can flash back, which is okay, but her tokens sacrifice each end step with Mayhem Devil, it hurts us. I'll bring the Glass Casket as well. It's just basically all, actually Glass Casket's better to search with Karn. Uh, this is a Boros control list. So Boros mid-rangey, leaning more towards control. If you're on a PC, you can see the deck list. There's a little widget right here, and you can see it from there. Uh, if we had more lands. I'm going to keep this hand. Let's just put Bone Crusher back. We'll be guaranteed at least a third land, and then Karn's really good. Probably not, to be honest, uh, Quantum. Um, but I wanted to try out a different style of deck. I never really tried the Shatter Gideon. Okay, so we'll see what they take here. Probably Karn. Just sounded like my window was going to collapse in. That's a nice follow-up play. If we can get that down against Rakdos, especially this early. All right. Can you beat a Merry Mint? Yeah, there's just like a bunch of fun cards in this deck, I think. 3-1 with Haste and Trample. Oh, sweet. I brewed this one up like uh, just before he came on stream now. Um, I think I want to do this now. Get the Woe Strider out of here. They will get to draw uh, two cards. So they keep on top. But this is going to apply pressure to them. We can get stuff with lifelink as well. We have an 04 blocker. And if we draw another untap line, then Chandra just starts going to town. Okay, another one. So we're trying to keep Shatter. Uh, it's better later on. All right, I got a 3-1 Trample. What you got? So here I can sweep the board or I can just put an emblem on them and then try to race them. I don't think they have a way to deal with Chandra. Because I can sweep this turn now after attacking. Yeah, so Team Aether is on uh, Aether Hub, so it's all the content creators there. Um, we basically just, uh, part of the community there, we'll have it in our tag. So that way um, any of the deck lists will go to the site there. You can catch all our articles, everything like that. So it's a mix of players. It's um, a bunch of smaller streamers and then some, I think like merchants on there too and some other people. A board wipe also deals a lot of damage to them now as well. So if they sack stuff and Midnight Reaper forces them to draw. Okay, that's fine. They get into three for Chandra. And they got a cat. They 
might be trying to dig for um, an oven here. These all have haste, right? Yeah. So I'll probably sweep the board here. You ping one damage, so you can ping there. Ooh, second merriment. So it's like worse against Dreadhorde Butcher. We'll just sweep here and then play second merriment out and then get two tokens a turn. Very surprised they oh I guess it protects their life total a bit. Karn getting sorcerer spyglass as well. Isn't that bad of a draw. And then I can gain three life as well this turn. So I like these eggs in the um like non-blue based control decks just because like late game you can just gain life sure they can ping into a point with chandra but at this point it's kind of a losing proposition the more they focus on chandra the more i can just attack them directly I can likely Woe Strider here, so it's probably going to be Woe Strider, sacrifice this Dreadhorde Butcher to deal damage to Chandra. Sack an enchantment. Sure. Well, wasn't expecting that. They red cap Malie. I th think I just take the Dread Horde Butcher off the battlefield here. And then just play out Bone Crusher. Nah, this puts him at dead. Yeah, if we got the second one off, we would have had lethal there. Okay, sweet. Still took him. So they brought in Med Red Cat Malies against us. Um, probably do want the Glass Cassia, to be honest. Chandra was good, Sarkin's fine, Conquer's Death is... Okay, but probably shave down a Conquer's Death here. Everything else seems reasonable. Alright, cool. Sounds good, Max. Enjoy the dog walk. It's really weird. It's just this, like huge rain shower and now it's perfectly sunny. So we came within like one life the first game of winning. Took game two. They're on the play here. Having access to six sweepers does help against this deck. And then the incidental life gain. Again... You have 43% chance, chance of drawing a land. Nah, I think we mulligan. Okay, sounds fine. Uh, I'm gonna put back the basic planes here. We're gonna go Malides into Golden Egg. Malides getting the blocker down early is relevant. They have like Dreadhorde Butchers. I would prefer if we had a Sweeper main. Okay. They probably take Conquer's Death. I 
Honestly, I'm not terribly upset with that just because they're not putting pressure on us yet. And if that's like their whole turn, it's turn three, they have nothing committed to the board. So I can block for a turn, so I think we just go golden egg here. Perfect, that gets me Clarion. I was hoping for something like uh, Midnight Reaper. So I'm just gonna do this. They'll probably point the damage here. And then next turn I have uh, Dragonfire up. If they don't play anything, I could just make a Castle Ardenvale token. That's something great to dragon fire. So we're playing a couple beacons in the list. Um, with all the planeswalkers that we have. They do have a double castle out, so they'll eventually be able to draw cards. And they have Devil. So I'm going to do this in response, gain some life. Alright. Flooding out a bit here. Don't really want a one for one, a shatter here. And if they're not really committing to the board, then I can still castle Ardenvale. Might just have like Farika's Liberation or stuff like that in hand. Well, see if they start activating. Like we're eventually going to draw into something. Guess I use that term loosely. Their hand's pretty full too, so they can't really play into it. Okay, so they have Woe Strider. We do have Lava Coil. So I'd rather Lava Coil here. They get a point of damage in. 33% chance to draw another land. We got 14 left. We are live. So in terms of threats, we have a bunch of them. It's like a 15% chance of drawing something good. So this is probably Farika's Liberation. Yep. 
They get a point of damage in, but that gets it off the battlefield. So, I'd like any of these, please. I'd actually like Karn probably the most. They're eventually going to draw into a cat, and then that's troublesome. They're at 11 minutes. Perfect. Hello, good luck, have fun. Anyone who stands in my way is getting sued. Aww, looks like someone's getting away. So I'm gonna sweep here, just because I can't block and I wanna keep this Chandra around. That pretty much shuts off these castles from them too. They're quite aggressive early on with them. Okay, you take the shatter from my hand. It's two emblems there. Golden egg will gain us another three life here. That puts them on dead. This is why uh, Bone Crusher is really good in this like control list. Eventually, it lets us pivot, so it's a removal early and then a win condition. All right, took down probably one of the tier one decks in the format, Rakdos. With the list, not bad at all. Turns out when you just put a bunch of removal and hard to deal with threats, I'm just gonna reset the client cause my untapped was being a little glitchy. We'll run it through for another one, see how it goes. For those swinging by, we are playing a Boros control list. I'll pull it up on stream. Uh, you can also see the deck list if you're on uh, PC just over here. There's a little widget. Um, basically, a bunch of planeswalkers, enchantments, removal. Melites draws you cards, like lands. Brook Golden Egg draws you cards. We have Merriment to make tokens. Then you have like Sweepers and Deafening Clarion and Shatter. You have Gideon that works with Shatter to draw you cards. Chandra can flash back any of your removal here. Um, Karn's got some sideboard options. Sarkin can make your team dragons and then Chandra's awesome and just wins the game there play it for another one playing giddy up one two three play first Sounds a little awkward, so I'm gonna mulligan. If we had a red source, I'd keep it. This sounds much better. Uh, so we'll keep the six. And I think we put Shatter away in the dark. Because if this is a non creature matchup, I don't wanna have to board wipes main. So I'm gonna get Melites off. This is likely Rakdos again. It's all we've been playing lately. Okay, well Karn is exactly where we want to be. So I want to guarantee we're getting Karn here. Having both these out early is good. Um, they know about this land, so we'll play it out. 
This also shuts off oven. It's literally like the only thing we've been playing recently. So Graft Digger's Cage, those of you unfamiliar, what it does is shuts off creatures entering uh, from either their library or graveyards. So you can't cast spells from your graveyards or libraries and the creatures can't enter the battlefield. So it basically shuts off Cat Oven and it also shuts off the escape part. So that does deal some damage. Interesting they go there, which is fine because I'm going to name Woe Strider here. With the, so I'm gonna go get Sorcerer Spyglass. That'll name Woe Strider, and then they can't sacrifice with the Woe Strider. Ooh, actually, that's annoying. So we're going to submit zero here. So let's go just Clarion here. And I'll probably get Golden Egg going. Actually, my sequencing is a little suboptimal there. I could have animated the um, the thing. Uh, so mana efficiency wise, it's better. But if they can get some cards in the Woe Striders, XL four. They have three cards right now, so they need two more cards in the graveyard. I think we just go here. They usually don't play Agonizing Remorse main. It's usually a sideboard card. Okay, and that gets another one. So I can go Chandra here. I could also go. Sh Chandra, so I could go Chandra, exile this. I could just do this, play out Chandra, plus I could get Clarion. Mm. Let's just do this. Go cage, and then next turn I'll play Chandra. I can also just minus for Clarion. I want to go get Sorcerer's Spyglass because then I could shut them off. Uh, pretty much all their sacrificing shenanigans. Keeping this back as a 2-2 just because it can trade with the Woe Strider. They opt to not sack there. So I can minus two here on the Woe Strider and then it exiles. And then I can plus Chandra to put an emblem or put a counter on this. Hmm, that's interesting. Plus this again, Chandra Sweep. I 
I think we just go Chandra sweep here. They get to draw some cards, but I don't really care because then this puts another Woe Strider in the graveyard. And then they can't get it back because of uh, Graft Digger's Cage. Um, they shouldn't have a way, you know, I'm just going to put a loyalty counter. I think protecting it is more valuable right now, just because this can win the game outright. I just would prefer not to have that go for not. Okay, they have Crocs, uh, it's fine, Crocs is not coming back. Sarkin can also just animate all these and hit him for 16. Yeah. Yeah, you have to pay the mana for the, the one out of the graveyard. So Disenchants, Glass Caskets, Lava Coils in. Keep the artifacts in the side. Uh, coming out was this Chandra, the Gideons, one Conqueror's Death, and the Ugin. Do we want the Ugin for like the Grindier matchup? Sarkin could like win the game out of nowhere. Ugin might be a little bit better. This exiles like Mayhem Devil and stuff. Let's make sure you down to two disenchants. Really the only thing we hit in that deck is um, Oven. And we have a number of ways to kind of shut them off that way. That sounds sweet. So we scry, we have a disenchant early, which is nice. I'm gonna keep the golden egg right now. So we're cutting the three mana Chandra just cause it's tokens sacrifice each turn. So bye Chandra. Tell me they take Conqueror's Death. Tell me they take Conqueror's Death. Take Conqueror's Death. You, don't worry about this. Let's just put this away. We'll put this away. Look, it's not here. It's not here. Shh. No. I don't know why that took them so long. That should have been like the easiest decision. Okay, proactive with our mana. Next turn I can scry again. Fortunate thing is that exile so we don't get it back with Conqueror's Death. So they do have a Crocs on the graveyard and an oven. Like, do we want to just curve out lands? Crocs has five. They could put another one in. We have two turns to draw another land. Your instant speed? Yeah, your instant speed. I don't really care about the two damage right now. I want to get this off the battlefield, I think. Because if I draw like Clarion or something, then I'd rather multi spell. Okay, so we're gonna do this first so they don't get the sacrifice. Bone Crusher is great. 
So I'm going to do this now just in case they have anything funny. I want it exiled. And then I have instant speed bone crusher here. Mm. I think it's going to take the two here. Okay, so they have cat. Question is, do we kill the cat or the mire? Actually, I think we kill the the mire trade in. Reason being, this has death touch, so it's worse as a blocker for bone crusher. This is actually very good against Croxa as well. Cool. Oh, that comes into play tapped. We got a little ahead of ourselves there. They'll draw a card here is my guess. So any other card in the graveyard, they get Croxa back. We're going to discard this Conqueror's Death, and then we have Glass Casket for it. So they can Croxa now. So bye bye Conquers. They leave a Mire Trident in the yard. So I think we need to prioritize getting this off the battlefield. And in case they have a second Croxa, I'm actually going to hold this land in hand. Our deck stops at six mana anyways, so it's not the end of the world. Um, no blocks here. Because when Sarkin comes down, then uh, it makes the token. So, played around it well. Otherwise, we would have lost Sarkin. So, just do this this turn. Um... Probably just do that. They can block if they want, but that puts Cat in the yard. They may choose to attack with both just to get two more cards in the graveyard for Croxa. But like the, even this life loss is starting to be relevant on their part. We're going to gain another two off Bertha Melides. They might be trying to dig for oven as well. Okay, so they brought in shield breaker. So that is relevant in this matchup. Kind of wanted that land opponent. And there are four cards. So we just do this. Let's force them. We can be the aggressor here. Sure. So unfortunately, they're going to be able to get a Croxa back. We lose our Ugin. We are a mana short there. But we got them anyways. They can't do anything. Our Flyers win. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet.
Okay, so I'm going to wrap this one up. We got two good games in. We got about an hour of gameplay. Uh, and we took down Rakdos twice with the list. I really enjoy this deck. Um, seems really cool. I was hoping we'd play against something else. But this is the list. Um, it's up on Aetherhub if you want to download it now. Uh, if you missed any part, I'll have the full video up on YouTube. Uh, be Tuesday because the Calyx video is going up tomorrow. The Calyx Doom Foretold list we played yesterday. Um, so that one will be going up tomorrow. Uh, if you do have any recommendations, as always, you can uh, let me know on YouTube. Uh, and we can go from there. Anyways, thanks for stopping by, everyone, and have yourself a great rest of the day.